No, I don't know how to do that. Oh, you have to you have to teach me. All right, oh, we're getting yeah. ready to go live. All right, thank you, Jesus. Let me turn my phone off. All right. Hey, Amen. I think we are. Thank you, Jesus. All right. We are live. God, we honor and thank you on today. God bless you all today. Amen. As you can see, I have someone with me here on tonight joining us. And I'm going to change my screen here so that uh, we can be side by side. Okay. God bless you all. You have tuned in to Elmwood Memorial Church. Amen. And we're just looking forward to a high time in the Lord and a great time in the Lord. Amen. And it looks like I'm echoing. So let me fix myself here. Amen. All right, a little technical difficulties. Let me fix myself. All right, praise the Lord. Amen. All right, we are ready. All right, I hope you all can still hear me. Amen. We are getting ready here to enjoy the Lord and enjoy this message even on tonight as we prepare even the more for this uh, on tonight. And let me um, get this shared so that more can view us on tonight. As you can see, I am not Pastor Buckner on tonight. He is in Memphis, Tennessee, and you have tuned in to Elwood Memorial for our um, Wednesday night services as we prepare for our devotional and prayer on tonight. And I'm just gonna open up with a word of prayer. We're just trusting and believing God in all things. Yes. God, we honor and praise you even on today Amen. for you've been so good and so kind to all of us. We just honor and praise you even on today. And God, even on today, as we start our prayer and devotional, be with us even on today, God. We thank you and we honor you. And we trust and believe you. And, and God, those that are even tuning in even now, yes, looking forward to the service on tonight and, and, and wanting to be a part of this and wanting to know more about prayer and want a closer walk with you, God. Touch their minds, open them, helping them to focus and, yes, and, and, and to, to tune in on you even on tonight. And God, we're going to thank you in advance for the blessing that they're going to receive on tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 As you see, we have missionary LaVon Morris with us from Fountain Temple Church of God in Christ. Amen. And I just want to introduce her because she's special to me for so many reasons. And as I say, I've said it before in a testimony, she and I became friends very fast. Um, she married one of the elders at our church. And when they got married, uh, she was a, became a member of Kennerly Temple. And in doing so, because uh, he was an elder there at Kennerly Temple, and in doing so, um, uh, we just, he introduced her to me. And then all of a sudden, we just kind of talk after church, talk after church. And um, we just, and then at one time, I think there was an afternoon service and we sat by each other. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to be honest, my filter was broken that day. And I, I, I was acting up in church as usual. I was <laughs> acting up in church. As usual. And uh, and she was like, you are my friend. <laughs> you are my friend. And she was so happy because she said she was concerned and she had prayed, Lord, you know, here I am at a church I'm not familiar with. And I, I want to have friends. I, you know, I want to know people. And the Lord did just that. And he connected us. And I'm grateful to God. And then Likewise. Uh, later on, a few years after that, he connected us in a different way. Because on the day I, I was at work and I received a call that my sister was in the process of passing. Mm. And she had sent me a text message asking how I was doing. Just a random text. We just text mm -hmm. each other, you know, not every day. But right. so happy she sent me a text. And I went to respond to her, but I ended up calling her. And when I called her, 
I, my mind was so frazzled. I was in St. Louis, somewhere downtown, lost. Mm -hmm. And it was like, my, I was trying to get home. And it's like, I was so frazzled. I couldn't even find my way home. And she was like, Sister Benita, uh, where are you? I said, I don't know. And she says, I'll come find you. Now, here's the thing. I'm like, look, if I don't know where I am, how are you going to come find me? But that's just <laughs> the kind of energy that she had. That's just the level of love she had. She was just so concerned about me that she was like, I'm going to come and find you. So I just praise God for her and uh, the, the type of spirit that she has. And for some, okay, for some, okay. Uh, the type of spirit that she has, and she was just looking out for me. And I just praise God for that. Uh, because that's just the way she was. And, she, and I was like, well, how can you come look for me? And you don't know where I'm at. She says, you, you know, I'll find you. You know, she was just ready to get in her car. But she prayed with me and sat in that car and talked to me until I found my way. Because every she yes. said, Lord help her. And then where are you at now? And I would name a street. Okay. And then she said, well, I think you need to turn. And I would turn. And she said, okay, where are you at now? You know, and I just praise God because she calmed me enough to get me to where I needed to be. Yes. And I praise God for that. And yes. it just helped to calm me, to get me to where I needed to be. And, you know, that reminds me of something in life. We sometimes need someone mm. to calm us. Yes. To, us to get where we need to yes. be in yes. every situation. Yes. And so tonight we're going to talk about prayer. Prayer is something we need to calm us to mm -hmm. get us to where we need to be. That is yes. another situation. We need prayer in our lives. Yes. We need prayer. Prayer is so important. We know what prayer is. I yes. taught about, about prayer in the back to basics. Prayer is just communication. Mm -hmm. We need that communication mm -hmm. with the Lord. We need that communication. It's not one-sided. It That's should be it. Yeah, us talking to him, yes. But we wait and have him talk back to us. Yes. Sometimes it's audible. Sometimes it's through the scripture. Sometimes yes. it's through another prophet. Some, mm. There are other ways that he can talk to, to us. Yes. And I, I chose Sister uh, LaVon for a reason because the Lord has been using her in a unique manner when it comes to prayer. And, mm. and, and, and then he uses her uh, to draw others and the type of prayers. I remember there were several months, even during the pandemic, that uh, she has a ministry called Flip It Ministry. And she mm -hmm. would call people and have them pray, pray specifically for certain things. And she had yes. me pray for children and our daughters and our children. Yes. And then she sent me names of her children and grandchildren. And I just started praying for young children and teenagers. Yes. And and then she had someone pray for ministers' wives. Someone else pray for, you know, every every you know every aspect of life. Yes, the Lord just set her up. He set her up. That's what he did. He set <laughs> her up. But it was a, such a blessing in the manner in which he did it because it hit every aspect of life. Mm. When you do things the way the Lord has you do it, yes, it hits every aspect of your life. Yes, and it challenges you. So she's going to talk to you about prayer uh, as it as it pertains to her life, because mm -hmm. she this this young lady has been through uh, a sudden tragic death of her son, her mm -hmm. son being incarcerated. And then after dealing with her son being incarcerated, a health scare. And, you know, the devil, he don't he, 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 come on. He takes the right. gloves. He, he put the gloves on. He takes the gloves off. Right. He, he don't care how he tries. Don't best care. He going to try to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so then she was like in 30 days of prayer and I was remembering the scripture and I remember when she called me and she says, the Lord, she says, Sister Benita, the Lord had gave me to pray for 30 days for my son, for him to get out. He's incarcerated. You know, my son, you know, and she says, and um, he gave for me to fast and pray. And would you, you know, join with me for 30 days of fasting and prayer and the mm -hmm. scripture I said, and I told her, I said, Matthew. 17 and 21 i said but by prayer and fasting i said how would that i said um how be it this kind goeth not out by but prayer and fasting yes. that was the scripture that i quoted to her when she yes. called me that day yes and then yes. i also today i was thinking about tonight and first thessalonians 5 and and, and 16 come to me and it says rejoice evermore pray without ceasing 
in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This is yes. so important to yes. our everyday life. Yes. You know, this, is our, this is what we need each yes. and every day. So yes. I'm going to turn it over to her that she can go as the Lord leads her because I believe she has a word from the Lord. I, I pray that you accept her even now that she goes as the Lord lead her, missionary, evangelist, <laughs> evangelist, LaVon Morris, go as the Lord leads you, talking about Thank you, prayer sir. and give your testimony. Oh, this Thank you so Lord much. God bless Thank you. Thank you so much. I want, before You're I muted. give my testimony, I'm muted. Hold on. I'm muted. Wait. It don't, I'm muted. You can't hear me. Huh? Can you hear me? I got you now. Okay, perfect. Okay. So I first, before I go in, I want to say it's an honor and a privilege. And Sister Bonita and I, we became friends fast, as she said. And what I loved about her, because as she says, she was cutting up. I love the fact that she was real. And when I was at Kenley Temple, I didn't know how I would fit in, what I would do, because it was all new to me. And so I thank God for the relationship that he started from that day into this one. She can pick up the phone and call me and text me and vice versa. And that's just what we do. So I'm honored and I'm humbled and grateful for the relationship. Because sometimes you don't meet people that you can be yourself, if you will. And so her being transparent, but yet saved, I connected to that. So I'm grateful. And as she talked about I had several things to happen to me and I told her I was going to make some notes because I want to make sure that I share that you would be blessed by what God did through me. And I don't know nothing else but prayer, right? I don't know anything else. I got saved at the age of 12. My mom raised us up in church. So we were church kids. We went to church on Sundays twice, sometimes three morning service. 3.30 service broadcast, Monday night prayer, Bible study, and then on Friday night. So that's all we knew. And then we used to do shut-in. So she would be in the shut-in, we would be in the shut-in. So I thank God for what my mom did because as we get older, you need that. So the scripture is true when it says to train up a child in the way they should go. And when they older, they won't depart from it. So a lot of stuff that we go through, we don't appreciate it then, but I can appreciate it now. So I'll share with you what, um, I guess I'll talk about my son. Uh, I'll talk about my son that got killed. I'll talk about that first so I don't crap through that and get to the other stuff. But um, my son was killed. I'm a mother of four boys. Now I'm married, so I have bonus children, but four biological children. And I believe in prayer. I've always prayed for my boys, kept them covered in church and all of that. So my son, Charles Devon Thomas, he got killed two years, 11 months and eight days ago. And so when that happened to me, I was very, first of all, shocked and caught off guard because I'm thinking, how in the world did this happen when I'm praying? I even was on a um, prayer line for children. Pastor Casey Starlong, she got a prayer page and they pray for children once a week. So I would get on this prayer call and I would pray because I got boys and I just prayed. And so when this happened to my son, I wasn't prepared, not expecting this because when you pray over your kids, you pray somebody else's child can get killed, but not my child. So going through that, it shook my faith. Save, sanctified, filled all the way up with the Holy Ghost. But when this tragedy hit my life, I'm thinking, what is this about? What is it about, God? Why me? I didn't understand it then, but as they say, by and by, I'm understanding the by and by that whatever God allowed to happen to us, it's going to work together for our good. So my son got killed. I went through some highs and some lows. I went through places where it made me question who God is, who am I? 
But I thank God that because when prayer is in you, even when you talk crazy, even hallelujah, even if it feels like you about to go crazy, God will sustain you. So it's important that we have a prayer life. Now that was a gut punch, right? It was a gut punch in the stomach and in the throat. And only thing that I can remember is that God, I told my boys, it don't matter what happened. It so be it, I'm going to pray. Praise God. I don't know nothing else but to praise God. I'm the one that will take off my shoes, that will run, be my tambourine, blow a blow horn. I'll do whatever needs means necessary. So when my son got killed, it was rough. But on the day of his celebration, the only thing I thought of, he gone, right? He ain't coming back. I don't understand it, broken, but the only thing I knew was to praise God in a dance, in a shout, in a holler. So we shouted, we praised God, and we did all of that. But then I went through, I would say, depression because I was broken. But I thank God that even when you're in a broken place, what's down on the inside of you, it's going to spring forth anyway and somehow. So God took me through that. And he's taken me through that. I'm not completely healed from it, but God is teaching me how to live through it. So when I get down, when I had to come and do this, I've been with God all day long. I was talking to God. What would I say? Because I don't want you to think because I can beat the tambourine, speak in tongue, blow the blow horn that I don't have no hurts. Listen, I had to make sure is God or you who you say you are because why is this happening? So God took me through that. He's taken me through that. And from that, what I learned and people say things, right? Out of pain, it's purpose. It sounds good. But listen, you got to go through some stuff for real. So out of the pain of my son, I'm in the process of writing a book because I don't believe that God allowed this to happen to me, not to tell somebody else. You can make it. You will make it. You might got the cry. You might fall out. You might not take a shower, won't brush your teeth or comb your hair. But there is a God that will keep you if you want to be kept. So that was the testimony about my son. So you all continue to pray for me that I continue to do what God would have me to do in that area. So he took me through that. And I thank God for a praying mate. And let me just throw this in there. For the single women, listen. Don't you go marrying any and everybody. You got to marry a man that show enough love God, that show enough love you. Because when you in a hard situation, when you talking about giving up, it don't make sense. Who is God? As if I forgot who God was. You need somebody that can pull you up and out and that can pray for you when you can't pray for yourself. That will tell you, girl, you sound foolish. You talking crazy, but I'll pray you back because you done went too far. So I want to encourage you, don't you stop praying. Whatever happens, God will sustain you through that boy getting killed. It gave us a building for our taxes. I wouldn't have never got a building. God did so many things. It opened me up to tell how I felt because as saved people, we don't really tell the truth. We mask everything. Listen, I was broken. I was upset and I was angry, but God, he's a keeper. So that's what happened with my son. Now, I want to talk to you all about how the Lord took me through the process with my son, Dimitri Javon Thomas. And I call this whole name out because Dimitri Javon Thomas, God made him a miracle. And so in your prayer time, you call his name out that he don't forget what God has done for him. Dimitri Javon Thomas was locked up almost nine years. And he kept, when COVID hit, they kept pushing the court date back. It was pushed back and kept going back. And I'm thinking, is this going to ever be over? So once COVID and everything finally got back to normal, listen, I kept my phone we talked on the phone, we video chat, we would pray, we did everything that we knew how. But when he was incarcerated, he was doing some stuff that he didn't tell me about. So now I understand why certain things had to get delayed, right? I'm talking about prayer. You got to pray for your kids. I don't care how old they are. 
how grown they get. We got to pray and plead the blood over their lives because the enemy wants to sift them as wheat. So Demetri was locked up almost nine years. And during that time, we talked all the time. We'd be on the phone. God started using him, started developing him. He would pray. I would call, he would call me from jail and we would video. I would prop the phone up on a tripod, put it all close up so the people can hear what God is doing from behind prison walls, right? And I was saying, Lord, this boy behind jail, when is he coming out? I'm so tired of calling him on holidays. Where y'all at, mom? What y'all eat? What you got on? I got tired of doing it all, right? But that was ministry. That was ministry for me to do for him and to be a blessing to the world to see. So he was locked up almost nine years. And when they brought back open the court system and they gave us a court date, I told my husband, I said, listen, we, I want to go on a fast. They gave us a court date. I said, I want to fast for 30 days. We're going to fast and believe God. And let me tell you about fasting and praying. I went to, I called different ones and told them what I was doing. And I didn't want no doubters. Listen, if you got any doubters, any disbelief, it wasn't going to work for me. I was so focused in on what I needed God to do. Don't talk to me. Don't tell me if God, it's God's will. If, listen, shut up. I know what God's will is. I'm praying for my son to be released. So as I begin to put together this prayer team, if you will, I said, God, who do I ask to pray? Some people I ask, let me think about. They ain't the one. When you're in a 9 situation, a 9 one if you got to think to pray, I don't want you. I needed some people that was radical, that had the faith to believe, even when it seems like it wasn't going to work. So I began to ask different ones. I want you to pray. When can you pray? And this is what we're going to pray. We're going to be specific. We pray for the judge. We pray for the prosecutor. We pray for the attorney. We pray for the juror. So God gave me family members and friends. I said, I need you to pray. And do you believe? If you don't believe, you ain't for me because I'm believing God. And I don't mean no harm, but I meant what I said because I was in a place where I'm ready for this boy to come out. He been too long and enough is enough, right? So during that time, I had a team of people. We prayed every day. Some was in town, some was out of town. And when I tell you, we prayed around the clock and we prayed specifically. I want to tell you this. When you pray specifically, you got to pray and target. You hit the bullseye. It's a target and we going in and we ain't coming down. I don't care what they say. I don't care what it sound like. We going to shoot this arrow and we not going to miss. But let me slow down. But when I feel God, when I think about what God done, I told my husband today, I cried so today because I began to think back what God did. He did that. Ain't no way in the world I could have did it. I just did my part. We all got a part to play. What is your part? Your part is to pray and to believe. So when we got the court date, at the time, he had a public defender, right? His public defender got fired as being a public defender. He became a paid attorney. So I told my son, I said, now listen, do you want to stick with him or do we get somebody else? I said, because I didn't want it. If I say change, it didn't work out. Then you talking about mine. You said, uh-uh, my faith wasn't that great. I said, I don't know what we supposed to do. What do you want to do? I said, now, if it was me, because he's been with you, he know your case. Let's talk to him and see. And what I asked him was, I said, Joseph, how do you feel about representing Demetri since now the court is open? He said, I feel good. I said, okay. I said, Joseph, are you scared? He said, no, I ain't scared. He said, I'm going to represent him as if he was my brother. That was my ticket. I said, Demetri, the man been with you. He said, he going to represent you as if he your brother. So what I began to do is to pray for Joseph Whitener. I prayed for him like never before. I began to look up scriptures. 
I looked up what attorney does. They represent all of that. I got down detail because I wanted to make sure that when I open my mouth, God, this is what we need for you to do for us. So Joseph became Dimitri's paid attorney. And so once we got the court date, they said the trial date is set for November the 1st through the 3rd. Well, we needed this psychiatrist, Dr. John Fabian, to be a witness on Dimitri's behalf. Dr. John Fabian, he's a psychiatrist, a well-known, renowned for psychiatrists that testify in cases like this. Well, John Fabian could not be available on the first through the third. I said, well, Dim I said, Dimitri, he can't be available. Dimitri said, well, mama, I'm tired of waiting. I'm going to keep this court date. I'm not going to worry about it. And we gonna go without John Fabian. I said, okay. So when he said that, I said, told Webster, I said, husband, if he got faith to believe, we not gonna worry about the psychiatrist. We just gonna go on because this is a trial and he ready to come out, then that's what we gonna do. Now it sounded crazy to me. I'm thinking if I can get all the help, let me get all the help. But Dimitri's face was like, mama, I ain't trusting in the psychiatrist. I'm believing God. This is the same one. There was a little kid getting in trouble all his life, locked up, but he had faith. So then my faith had to connect with his faith. Y'all, I had a bottle of mustard seed. I kept mustard seed in my purse. And when I start feeling doubt, I'll take it out and start shaking it. I got faith the size of one mustard seed. That's all it takes. So as we went to that, I said, John, his attorney said, you know what? We're gonna ask if we can change the trial to the third through the fifth, cause I feel better if we got the psychiatrist. So I said, now, wait a minute, is he getting scared? I don't need nobody being scared. But the, I began to pray about that. I said, God, if John Fabian is to be needed to help this case, then I want you to change it where John Fabian schedule, the court will allow us to have the third through the fifth. I brought that back to the prayer people. I say, listen, we need the schedule to be changed from the third to the fifth. We went and prayed about that. Y'all, God is good to us in spite. They changed it. So now we got the court from the third to the fifth. So in the midst of that, November the 1st, I got to tell you what happened with my health. November the 1st, I went to get a mammogram back in October. And then on the 1st, I get this news talking about something they saw. All this time I'm, I'm praying and fasting for 30 days. Then on the first, the person that was supposed to pray, she said, Bonnie, I ain't gonna be able to pray because I didn't got sick. I didn't got a setback because of this flu shot. I told her, so she can't pray. I knew it was for me to pray. On November the 1st, I got news that they thought they saw something in my left breast. The person that was supposed to pray couldn't pray. I said, oh, I'm supposed to pray. Let me tell you what. If I can cuss in profanity, I would have. But I cussed the devil out and speak it in every tongue that I could imagine. Devil, you going to give me a report on my breast at the same time that I'm fasting and praying for this boy to get out. What the enemy was trying to do was trying to get me distracted, but I was on an assignment. I said, this is an assignment from God. Webster, I'm going to pray. I prayed so, I prayed until I was soaking wet in the car. I went in the room, shut the door. I began to tell the devil who he was and who I was and who the God I served. I prayed so that I was just drenching wet. When I came out the room, my husband said, so, you show sure woe the devil. I woe him out because what happens when you got one thing going on, God allows it, right? More stuff piling up, piling up. But I was on an assignment to pray for my son to get out. We got the day changed. I get a diagnosis, but I'm yet praying. And I begin to say, God, what else? What is it now? What is it? And my good husband, he said, my son, it's for your next sermon. A sermon? A sermon? I said, what is it? He said, God wants you to get over fear. It's your fear. I said, I ain't got no fear. So as we go through that, we get the court date for November the 3rd through the 5th, a three-day trial. 
I've never been at a trial where it's my son on trial. My son on trial, we got the prosecutor, we got Michi's attorney, and it's a jury trial and the judge. The day that they did, we went there and they was doing the jury. I was sitting there. We have to be in tune with God, right? And so as I was sitting there, they had the jurors. They had four, they caught all about 60 people, but they only take 14. It's 12 that sit on the bench and they have two extra ones just in case two decide to app out. They got a backup, right? So when they was calling the jurors name, the Holy Ghost said, write down the names. Y'all, I was shaking so trying to type in the names of the jurors because I wanted the names so that I can go back and pray. I wrote down every juror name, texted in my phone. And so when I got home, I put all the names out. I sent out another message to everybody. I said, these are the juror names. We gonna pray. And listen, I don't know what they say. Oh, you can pray good. I don't even know what that means. Prayer to me is talking to God. I took the names and even tonight, I, I wrote the names down. Heather Davis, somebody named Richard, Dana, Gary, Jared, David Reese, Rico, Mallory, Margaret Foster, Sean Saunders, Bonnie Tippy, Clarence, Matthew Estrage, Belinda Mitchell. That was the 14 names. The day before the trial ended, I went in the closet where the room that Dimitri sleeps in. I went in the closet, I took these names. I began to pray for each one of these jurors. I said, God, I don't know Heather Davis, but you know Heather Davis. If there's anything in our heart that will not allow her to forgive and to give Demetra another chance, God, I ask that while Heather Davis is sleeping, you change her thoughts and her mind that she'll come back with not guilty. Richard, I said, God, I don't know this Richard, but my daddy named Richard and Richard Lee Lester was a good man. He made some mistakes, but you are God of grace and mercy. So this Richard, this juror, give him grace on Demetri. I don't know Dana. I I know a Dana, but this Dana that's sitting on the seat that got to make the decision for my son. We ask that if there's anything in Dana that won't allow her to forgive or to make her not give him victory, God, I ask you to change her while she's sleeping. I don't know a Gary, but you know Gary. I begin to call the names out one by one. I talk to God about these people. God, all souls belong to you. These are souls. I don't know what's going on, but if they don't know you and the pardon of your seat, let them get the know you let when i come in the room they see us say i went crazy y'all you hear me crazy i called every name out one by one i cried out i said god every name i said and bonnie tippy i said that's my nickname and i got a good heart i forgive let this bonnie forgive i got stupid in prayer i was so radical in prayer prayer is nothing but talking to god and when i got done talking to god about the jurors i sat in that room and I just cried in that closet. I said, God, but one thing I wanna make clear, if you don't allow my son to come home, if he's found guilty, I won't lose my praise. If he goes back to jail, I won't lose my praise. I'm gonna forever praise you. I've made a commitment that I won't take it back. But whatever you do, God, I'm gonna still serve you. Listen, I was like the Hebrew boys. We in this fire, right? We in this hot burning fire. If God don't do it, it ain't because he can't, but I bet you I praise him. And that was my covenant to God that I'm gonna praise him. Well, God is a God that is faithful. God does what he wanna do. After we went through the three day trial, went through and I had to hear and sit there. Listen, this prosecutor was so pompous, so high up. She thought that she had won hands down. And I, I, listen, I don't know all the scriptures in the Bible, but this is the reason why you got to get with somebody that when you don't know, they are pouring to you. So my sister gave me the scripture. You know, uh, in Exodus, where Moses was trying to get away from Pharaoh, I, listen, he was trying to get away from Pharaoh. And let me read it. It's Exodus chapter, um, Exodus chapter, I, I, Exodus is verse 25. I think it's Exodus 23 and verse five or Exodus 25 and five. But the part that I love about this one verse, 
He made their chariot wheels turn hard and the chariots difficult to drive. So the Egyptians said, let us flee from Israel for the Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Now we talk about it. We see these, this Egyptian we don't see no more. Well, when that prosecutor was talking all this stuff about my son, all I kept saying, God, jam her up. I was saying, jam her words up. She's trying to say, she's trying to exaggerate. Let her know that you are fighting with us. She was trying to trip Dimitri up. She was asking him all questions. And then she was so bold with it. She would say, here's exhibit A. She would toss it on the thing. What she was trying to do, she was trying to provoke him because she wanted to show them, see, this is what I'm talking about. But oh God, God got her. She was a Caucasian woman. I ain't got nothing against them. But let me tell you what, after Dimitri spoke under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and was able to answer the questions that was being asked, baby, she turned red. She was hot on fire, but everything she would say and every time she would shove the paper, I say, God, jam her up. God jam her words up. Let her get flustered. Let her not be able to say what she's trying to say. She's trying to lie. I came against lying. I came against over-exaggeration. I came against trying to bring up stuff that don't pertain to this. Oh, I began to curse the devil out in tongues. I sat there for three days. And then when they broke for deliberation, I told my uncle, we, well, when they got done, it was me, Webster, my uncle passing all them. I said, y'all, we gonna pray? My husband told me, I said, no. Thinking, no. I said, we ain't gonna pray. He said, no, I'm fine. So I told my uncle, I'm going in the room to pray. I refuse to stop praying. I wasn't gonna pray until either he came out or the doors he going back. I went in this room, me and my uncle went in this room as they're deliberating. Y'all, I'm in this room, chairs, we prayed and my uncle left. He went out, I gotta say, stay in. I stayed in the room. I pushed the chairs up, it was a long table. I pushed the chairs up. I began to walk around the table. And you know, G.E. Patterson, he sings this song. I make the darkness light before thee. Whatever's wrong, I'll make it right before thee. And the high places, God gonna bring them down. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, God, this justice system, this prosecutor, it's a high place. I began to sing it over and over. I put it on YouTube. I began to cry out. I said, God, I don't know what the end gonna be, but if you gonna do it, I'm gonna trust you and believe you. I began to play it over and over. And then God gave me BBYCC, believe. I start playing that, believe for it. Anything that God gave me to motivate me, to keep me from doubt, I did it. I sang, I praised, I ran in circles. I took several laps. And then on the last one, I put on only God can do it. I shouted so, I shouted so I was drenching wet. I would peep out the door. They ain't ready yet. They wasn't ready. They wasn't ready. So I went back in. I shouted, I shouted, and I praised God. I worshiped God so then his attorney come back. They ready. He said, how you feel? I said, I'm ready too. We go back in the room. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Shaba, Ikandarabosha, hallelujah, hallelujah, God is good, he's good. We go back in the courtroom, my husband, they all sitting in there, we sitting in there, y'all, I went in with my war clothes on, every day God gave me what the word, I went in army fatigue, I said it's a fight, and I'm coming out with the victory, and if God don't do it, I still got the victory. We go in there, I got it, they start bringing the jurors back. We have to stand up, so we stand the judge, we stand. Up. And I got nervous, I said, I ain't looking at them, I just kept my eyes. I said, God, I keep my eyes on you. You said, if I keep my mind on you, you will keep me in perfect peace. I kept my eyes pierced up, I just was looking up. Honey, they say you made a decision. It was from Jews to whites to blacks to old to young, everybody. Honey, I looked over there, I kept, I, when it was time, and they passed the paper, I stood up, my leg, my leg was shaking. I ain't never shook like that. And God say, stand still. I pushed my own foot down. I stood still. And when the, I looked, I said, Lord, I don't, I'm gonna try to read her lips. I didn't know. 
I'm looking straight. When I looked at her, she said, not guilty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She said, not guilty. I said, God didn't did it again. God, you didn't done it again. Only I was singing. Only God can do it. Only God is done, done, done. He did it, did it. I began to worship and praise God for doing it. My uncle pushed me. I didn't know. I said, God. And the thing to this is, he took me through. I want to encourage somebody. If you got a loved one that's incarcerated and you're waiting on God to deliver, don't you give up. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what they say, what they talking about. Believe my son, it took a minute to get him because they had one paper, one paper to send him back. They didn't think he was coming out, but God got the final say. When God say time is up, time is up. I'm telling you, prayer changes. Prayer is the key that opens up the door. We got to fast and pray. And God gave me the scripture. You remember when the daughter died and Jesus had to clear the room. If you got any doubters, if you got anybody that don't believe, you got to clear the room. With me going through what I was going through, I needed only believers. I didn't have time for doubters because I was believing and trusting God. Somebody told me, I said, well, if God, it's God's will. I know God's will. I know God's will gonna be done, but if I'm praying for healing, believe me for the healing. God's will is gonna be done. So I was very strategic. God gave me who to call. He gave me people that when I couldn't make it and I felt like it wasn't gonna work, and he gave me somebody that would pour back into me. So God brought my son out of jail. He's out of jail when he's still, and they thought, the system thought, that he should be locked up, but God said not so. So God took me through that. The only way I am here today is because of prayer. It's because of prayer. I don't got nothing else. I got a praise and a dance and a shout, but it ain't the praise and the dance. It's the talking to God. It's God, here I am. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of a prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, it's me. So when you're in a situation, you got to talk to God and God will talk back to you. So I told you on November the 1st, I got the diagnosis about my breast. I'm thinking, okay, what is it? But the whole time I kept saying, it ain't cancer, devil, you a lie. I ain't got cancer. I know God can heal from cancer, but I ain't got cancer. Every time I went through that, I went through the process of, several biopsies, several mammograms. And when they got done and they took the tissue out, it was benign. But what they said, it's a discordant. And a discordant means that they really not for sure of what it is, but it's a concern. So I told my husband, why are they concerned? I ain't concerned. If it's benign, it's benign. But then the Holy Ghost said, listen, are you in fear? Because I didn't want to be, I didn't want to know. First of all, I don't want to know. I don't even care. I ain't got cancer. But God was taking me through the process to get to know him. See, we go through the tests and the trials to have a testimony. But in the test, it's showing you who you are and it's showing you who God is. I say it all the time. It's easy to worship God when you're on the mountain, but can you worship him and praise him when you're in the valley? When it's all crazy, can, do you still got the same fire? Do you still believe God? Is he still good? Is he mm -mm good? See, he real good when it's all good, but when things hit you and they at your door, what do you do then? So when I went through that, I said, okay, what are we gonna do? She said, well, I suggest that you get the MRI. So y'all, when I got the MRI, I couldn't get in the machine. And listen, I'm praying, I had different ones praying. They said, all just close your eyes, get on in there, y'all. They said, oh, you small, that machine. I got in there, I went in there with big face. I'm getting on in there, let me get on in there. I got, I got to that machine. They said, we gonna try you out. I was like, okay. They laid me in the machine. They rolled me back. I said, ah, I had a little button push. Get me out, out, out. I said, I can't, my heart 
was beating so fast. She, I said, well, let's try it again. I tried, I said, uh-uh, get me out. I came out. I called Webster, I said, I couldn't get in that machine. He said, well, I said, I was closed in. And I was afraid, I didn't even, they said, like, but you, I don't know if I'm claustrophobic, but don't shut me in, let me out. So I was so upset that I couldn't stay in the machine. I'm like, I wanna know what's going on. Well, that was in December. Well, mind you, November, December, well, November is when they were saying, I see something. So the MRI tells you exactly what it is. So I couldn't do that. I said, well, let me call. They said, well, we got a big machine. I'm thinking, well, why y'all ain't give me the big machine? I want the big one. So they I make an appointment to get in the bigger machine. It's the big one that you can get in. I do that. My husband take me. He dropped me off. My husband, let me tell you, let me pause and I'm going to tell you this. My husband is a funny man. He likes to joke when I'm trying to be spiritual and deep. He said, man, don't you come out. If you don't get in that machine, don't you come back out. I said, I'll be back. So he drops me off. I had been praying. I called the pressers. I said, I'm going this machine. Pray. You're going to be fine. I got to the place in the big machine. I could feel my heart beating. I'm thinking, talking to myself, why am I having heart palpitation? I said, I ain't got no fear. And I told her, I said, my heart is racing. She said, oh, that's normal. I said, but I told my heart to be calm. She said, you're going to be fine. I'm going to talk you through it. You're going to be fine. So I go back there. I get in the machine. You got to lay down, put your face in the thing. They put your breasts in the thing. I looked at the machine. I said, machine, I ain't scared of you. I got to get in this machine because I want to know what this is. It's trying to ail my body. It ain't supposed to be here. And I said, and it ain't still ain't canceled. I get in the machine. She said, you want a test? I said, well, yeah, let's test. They give you a test. And it was wider. So as I lay down in the machine, she put me in, I felt good. Here I go again. <laughs> Let me out, bring me out. She brought me out. And when she brought me out, I just started crying. I said, I said, I don't know why I'm afraid of being in the machine. She said, you don't have to be, you're not the first. And I said, God, I don't wanna be afraid. I need this exam because I wanna know what it is. She said, well, how about I put on some gospel? I said, that'll be good. I said, put, should I put the gospel? Then they had the earbuds on. And you got all this stuff contracting my mic. It's too much. Ears for music. She said, well, put the ears on first. And then we'll do it again. And I told myself, I said, you going through this machine. Listen, God is faithful. I put the earbuds on first. She put on gospel. And guess what was playing on gospel? CC Winans, believe for it. I got in the machine. Hallelujah. God is good. Listen, he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Now, you was, I thought to myself, how in the world? What God was saying, I'm with you, girl. She, believe for it. She, I, I just start crying. She pushes me in. I just weep. I said, God, I thank you. I just began to sing, honey. I began to pray and speak in tongues and talk to God. I go through the MRI. And as I was, as they got these earbuds on, they'll say, you okay? I was, I said, I'm good. Oven song, it played. She said, oh, you in here four minutes. I got in a place, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God will put you in a place. Honey, I forgot all about the time. My heart was resting. God want me to rest in him. I'm telling you, he'll put you in a place where you are resting God. So as the songs was playing, I was in there. She'll say, you fine, honey. I was speaking in tongues. She say, what you say? I said, I'm talking to the Lord. She said, oh, that's a good person to talk to. She kept me in there. I came out. And when I was in that place, I said, God, I thank you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I won't fear no evil because God is with us. And for me, I was in a place, I didn't know, I'm thinking I ain't never been closed in and see what it is. My husband, oh, it's your mind. Well, it's our mind. We can't control our mind. We just feel the way we feel. So God allowed me to have the MRI. And when I came out, she said, you did good. I said, God did good. And I said, I still ain't got cancer. And she said, I got good exams. I got good pictures. So I left there and I just went in the room and I came out. Said my husband sitting out there waiting to pick me up. <laughs> he let the window down. He said, before I let you in the car with the window down, did you get the MRI I said, I got it done. Let me in the score. My husband will make a joke out of everything, but I thank God because he gives you what you need. He said he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. So God did that for me. So we go through that process. We get the test back. And they did the MRI, and then the MRI, they told me some, they couldn't tell. I was like, what? I said, you mean to tell me? Well, we see it. Now we see two more spots. They first saw one, two more. I said, now what? So I told my husband, I said, you said the MRI blow it up? They see stuff? Well, it did. It showed a more spots but they couldn't tell what the spots was. So then I say, okay. They say, so now we want you to have the actual biopsy so we could uh, take out more tissue. I'm thinking, I got an anchor. I said, God, I went through the machine. I passed that test. Now I got to get something else done. So I had all these procedures done. How I'm doing with time? Do I need to hurry up? Want me to hurry up? Sister Benita, am I okay with time? Okay, I'm okay with time. So I had that done, right? And so they had to, they couldn't see, they could see more spots. My husband said, well, that's good because that if it's something hidden, they could see. So I got that done. So then after they saw that I had ultrasounds done, more mem I had another biopsy done. And they said, well, this biopsy, we're going to put a clip in because it's so small. And we decided, let me roll it back one second. We decided because it was so small, they didn't know what it was. And the only way they know is by taking it out. Let's take it on out. So I decided, I told my husband, since it's so small, we'll get it removed because I didn't want no traces of whatever it was, this discordant tissue that could possibly be down the line, something, if you will. So I go back, I have an outpatient breast procedure where they took out in two places, they took out the tissue, right? So when they take it out, it's all out. So when they say it's everything was benign, I didn't understand that when it's benign, I'm thinking you good, no cancer, what we said he's talking about. But God said, take it out. I said, I'm gonna take it out. We decided let's take it out just because we don't want anything. So when they took it out, I had that done. They took it out. And when they tested it, still benign. So when I go back to my doctor on March the 7th for my first follow-up, she says, we took everything out and it was small. She said, but I'm glad we did remove it because there is a 38% chance that it could over a lifespan that can form into cancer. Well, God said, I said, nope. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. But then the other side, I said, listen, 38% that it can form. What about the 62% that it won't be? So it's removed, no cancer, and God healed me. I had been praying, God, I wanted to dissipate, dried up. He didn't take me that way, but he allowed it to be removed and there's no cancer. So even in that, it's all about prayer, fasting, believing God. We got to pray in season, out of season. Men ought to always pray and never faint. The prayer is to strengthen you that when you get in the test, 
you got it. Now in the test, I needed more God. He was showing me that guess what? You can't walk in fear. You gonna believe me for that, but you can't believe me for this. So I'm in a place now that my husband said I passed. I said, oh yes, I passed the test. So there is no cancer. All of the tests show benign, but because the devil slick, I said, I don't want no traces in my body. Take it all out. So whatever the 38% you thought was going to form, 62%, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No cancer is benign. And by his stripes, I'm healed. So I stand today to let you know that I am a walking miracle that God can heal he can deliver, he can set free, he can open up prison doors. When men say not so, they have the paper to send them back. But God said not so. This could have formed into cancer, benign over lifespan. But listen, I'm, I ain't got it. Every time it looked like I ain't got cancer. Every time it sound like I ain't got cancer, you got to listen, declare with your own mouth, devil, this ain't that. I know what they said, but what do you say? What does God say? God got the final say. So whatever you need God to do, God is faithful and he's just, he ain't got no respect to person. Whatever you need God to do, God is gonna do it. So we tell on this day, this day, if you don't know how to pray, honey, listen, God, it's me. It's me, Bonnie, Levine, I need you. Prayer is nothing but talking to God. However you talk to God, you talk to God, and then God will talk back to you. He'll give you exactly what to do, how to do it, and he'll bring you through every test and every trial. And then the test is for a testimony. Your situation ain't for you. It happened to you, but it's to tell somebody else what God can do. I can tell you, my son would still be locked up. And check this out. My son, if they would have kept him, they said he would have to stay incarcerated for life. Life, baby, whom the son set free is free indeed. When God say time is up, time is up. When God say you are healed, you are healed. When God say you are delivered, you are delivered. Whatever you need God to do, trust and believe God and connect with some other believers. Don't get no doubters. Don't get nobody that, I don't know. It's I, Listen, we went through some stuff. We went through a process that made me say, God, what next? Y'all, I'm so crazy. I mean, crazy, like sometimes crazy. I went in the bathroom, looked at myself in the mirror. I said, God, what is it? What is it? As if the mirror going to say, this is what it is. I said, but when I come out, I ain't crying no more. I'm tired of crying. God, whatever you're trying to take me through, take me through it. And that's just how I was. I went in that closet. I talked to them names like I knew them people. I said, whatever you going through, if there's any unforgiveness in your house, I declare and decree while you sleep. God, get in a psychic. Let him wake up with Dimitri on his mind. Let him say, this is a young man. Give him another chance. Listen, get radical. Get radical over your situation. Don't let your situation overtake you. I got on my shirt. Sit down, devil, and shut up in that order. When the devil talk to you, you talk back to the devil, shut up. I ain't listen to you. Get you some scripture. I didn't know all the scriptures, but baby, I got a scripture and I wore the devil out with the ones I do know. And that's what it's about. We got to pray and trust and believe God. And what you don't know, and when you lack, God will give somebody to help you through the situation. He'll give you somebody that will link arms with you and they'll stand in there until you're able to come out on your own. And so that's what it's about. It's about praying and trusting God. It ain't fancy, it ain't all these tongues. Listen, tongues is good, but I speak in English. I only speak in tongues when the spirit gives me utterance. 
But when I tell you I wanted to cuss the devil out, not with profanity, I wanted to cuss him out in tongues. I wanted to slice and dice him. Get up off of me, devil. You can't have my children. You can't have me. I'm going to live and declare the works of God. I got grandkids. I'm going to live. I got a son, a grandson that I ain't seen since his daddy been dead. You think I'm going to die? Never. Never. And I say this and I'll give it back to Lady Bonita. The enemy was playing with my mind. He said, now your son out and you didn't got sick. It's cancer. So every time I be checking and every time I would check, I beat it ain't that devil. Then look like true story. It was my left breast, but why was my right breast hurt? See, it's in the mind. Devil, I said, I told him, I, I said, now my right breast hurt. Devil, it, see, it's over there. I was, it didn't jump on both sides. Devil, you a lie. So now the process, every six months, I go get an MRI, got to get back in the machine, and then I'll get a mammogram. So I said, God, as you said, I didn't pass because I cried. I ain't going to cry the next time. But if I happen to cry, I understand that God is with me. He walks with me. He talks with me. He loves me like he do. He kept me for such a time as this to be a blessing to another mother that lost a son. He kept me from going crazy so I can help another mother. You ain't going to go crazy. You might feel like it, but he kept me. He the same guy. He kept me to be another encouragement to another mother that got a son locked up. And they talking about he ain't never getting out. Devil, you a whole lie. Your daddy a lie. You are the father of lies. God will open up prison doors. They got a paper to say, go back. But God has said, you don't need that paper. He coming out. He kept me to tell somebody else, you might got to go through some processes in these bodies, but God is a healer. And if by chance he don't heal you, you ain't going to die. The devil is telling me, girl, you going to die. Devil, I ain't dying. I'm living. So when I break out in a dance, it's a reminder to let the devil, my feet then hit the floor. My feet didn't hit the floor. I'll praise him on the parking lot. I'll praise him at the grocery store. I'll praise him on a Zoom. I'll praise him wherever I go. I'll break out. I'll pull my car over. Listen, when my son came out that courtroom, honey, we had to wait to get him. But when they let us out, I just, when it, after I hugged the attorney, I just went in. I shouted to I like that. I said, calm down. I won't be calm. I won't keep quiet. God has been good to me. He's been good to me. And so I encourage you that whatever you're going through, trust God. Believe God. Keep on praying. Keep on fasting. Don't you doubt. And when you begin to doubt, you get you a prayer partner. Somebody ain't going to tell your business. They're going to take it from their heart their mouth to God. Ain't nobody talking about you. We gonna pray about it. Believe God to do the impossible. Everybody was like, oh, I know it. God told me, but well, he didn't tell me. I didn't know it. I was hoping it. I was believing it, but he didn't tell me. I had a dream that Demetri was at the door. Somebody said, that was it. Well, that was a dream, but see, I ain't gonna say God say he coming out. I was believing. So if you ain't got nothing but mustard seed faith, that's all you need. And listen, keep the faith in the fire. That's what God gave me a few weeks ago. Girl, you got faith in the fire. I'm getting it on a shirt. Faith in the fire. So I pray that I said something that will help you along your path. And if it ain't for now, put it on the shelf. You might need it later. But my assignment is to tell of God's goodness and of his mercy and what he can do. He did it for me. He'll do it for you. He ain't like me like that. I don't even always get it right, but God loves us so. He's forever forgiven us grace and mercy. Listen, don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on your child. Don't give up on your grandkids. Don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up on your husband. Don't give up on your wife. Don't give up on your family members. You can't, listen, let me say this. This is Benita, come on back. The devil can't even have the stuff that I don't want. 
If I sit my trash out, devil, you can't have the trash. The devil can't have none of my stuff. He can't have it. My son that got out of jail, be acting like he didn't forget, want to act like he want to go back. It'll make you mad. Devil, I told you. So guess what? I turned up my prayer. Turn it up. God, he's trying to do wrong. He's trying to mess up. God, let him get sick. Bring it back. If he do try to get high, let him not get high. If he try to drink, let him not get drunk. You got to talk back to the enemy that tries to talk to us. Talk back to the devil. Devil, shut up. God still said that he going to be a minister. God still say he going to be a prophet. God still say he going to preach the word. God said it, and that settles it. That's it. That's it. That's all. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory. That's all I can say is glory, glory, That's glory. It. Thank glory you, Jesus. be to God. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That blessed me. That blessed me. That blessed me. And I think if there was a subject tonight, if that would have been a subject on that testimony tonight, that subject would be be specific. Be, be specific, specific in your prayer. Be specific. specific. Glory, yes. hallelujah. Yes. That's what I'm going to be saying for the rest of the week. In my hallelujah. prayers, I need to be more specific in my specific. prayers. And be just specific. go in. Yes. Know, and not get tired. Hallelujah. Nope. So we're going to be closing specific. out here, but I'm going to ask for you to pray yes. uh, for those uh, tonight. If you could just pray as we get ready to go out here. And we just thank everyone who has tuned in. And I'm going to share this tonight on uh, YouTube for those okay. who are, uh, I wasn't able to do that. Okay. I'll share it on YouTube as well as on the church page. Okay. Uh, so let those who weren't able to watch it, uh, my page will watch, share it to the church page. And we're just okay. grateful to God for all of those. I know thank this you. blessed you because it blessed me. I was having a fit in this chair. Glory Sister to Bonita. God. I think I did the river dance in this seat. Under just here, my feet and kick my shoes off and everything under this desk. But I'm just grateful to God. Amen. I told you there was a testimony tonight. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So at this Hallelujah. Time, missionary to go ahead and pray you, at Jesus. this time. And then thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. God, we bless your name. We bless your name. We magnify you. We glorify you. We exalt you, God. You are good to us. You are great and you are mighty and we find no fault in you. You are the great I am. You reign supreme. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we give you praise and we give you honor. God, we thank you that you kept us all day long. We thank you that you kept us as we went here and there. You brought us back safe. God, we thank you for traveling mercy. We thank you for angels being assigned to us. We thank you for this opportunity to come together midweek, halfway through to tell of your goodness and of your mercy. God, we thank you for this prayer and devotional service. We thank you for Amwood Church. We thank you for Lady Buckner and Pastor Buckner. We thank you for their ministry. We thank you for everyone that will come near and far. We thank you that they will reach souls that others cannot reach. We thank you, God, that you got a work for them to do. We pray for the members to increase. We pray for growth. We pray for development. We pray that you send young and old to come into this ministry to build it even the more. We give you praise and we give you honor for the work that they're doing. We pray that their faith will go to an all-time high. We pray. God, we pray that they will not get weary and well-doing. We pray that though they're in the valley, sometimes you're with them, even when they seems like it's not working. We thank you for the will and the call that's upon this ministry. We give you praise and we give you honor, God, for the leadership that they're doing and the work that they're doing. And we pray for this live, for those that are on here and that will play it back later. We pray that we said something that will be a blessing to them. We pray 
pray for them to have strength. We pray for them to have faith in the fire. We pray that we will not get weary and well doing, but we will reap because we're not going to faint. We pray, God, that whatever the test is, that you're going to take us through the test for a testimony. We pray, God, that we're specific. Whatever they're saying in our bodies, we pray for specific, specifically that you can heal, deliver, and make free. We will be specific in our prayer. We will be specific, God. We will call it out, God. We will call it out, God. Although you know about it, we call it out. You already know. There's nothing that you don't know. You're all knowing. You're all seeing. You know all things, God. We pray that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises shall be condemned. We pray we come against sickness and diseases. We pray against tumors. We pray against growth. We pray against abnormality. We pray against everything in our body that will try to affect us, that will raise up. We cancel cancer, every sign of cancer, every form of cancer. Prostate cancer, you cancel. Breast cancer, you cancel. Liver cancer, you cancel. Cancel. stomach cancer we cancel in the back we cancel in the throat we cancel in the brain we cancel it in the name of jesus god we pray we pray for healing to be our portion we pray that you give us strength to do what you would have us to do. We come against even things that we say is small, migraines. If there's migraines, we counsel you migraine. You cease, you arrest yourself. You flee the body in the name of Jesus. Anything that will try to trigger whatever's off, we pray that it aligns up. This body aligns up everything that's off. The abnormality, God, you make it normal. You regulate. High blood pressure, regulate. Low blood pressure, regulate. We regulate our bodies in the name of Jesus. God, you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. And the chest of your peace was upon us. And by your stripes, we are healed. We thank you for healing. Healing is Sister Bonita's portion. It's her portion on today. Whatever it is, God, it's not too hard for you. It's not too big for you. And we thank you. We expect a praise report. We looking for you to do it. We not guessing. We not doubting. Doubting, but we believe. We believe you, God. We believe you. We believe you. We believe you, God. We pray for our children that if they're lost and they're not connected with you, that they will reconnect with you, God. We pray for families, God. We pray for the husbands. We pray for the wives. We pray for the children that if they're disconnected, you will reconnect in the name of Jesus. We come against you outside force, every force of distraction, everything that will try to weasel its way in. Devil, we send you back. Return to sender. Get out of our houses. Get out of our children. Get out of our husbands. Get out of our wives. Get out, devil. We put you out. We don't ask you. We declare and decree that this day, your assignment it's canceled we cancel the assignment of the enemy that wants to try to steal kill and destroy but devil you can't have my family you can't have the families represented on this live and that'll play it back later you can't have them take your hands off devil and we declare and decree that we shall live a long healthy life we not dying. We come against premature death. We come against stray bullets. We come against, we in and out. We go to the store, the gas station. We come against stray bullets in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against us. We pray, God that you continue to be the healer that you are, that you continue to protect our going, protect our coming. Continue, God, to show yourself strong in our lives. And we give you praise and we give you honor for doing it. We pray for the backslider that's went away, but we pray that they come back in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that you are restoring. We thank you that you are delivering. We thank you that you are making whole. We thank you that you are setting free. I thank you, God, that the prison doors shall come open. You you did it for Dimitri, you're going to do it for somebody else. I thank you for the men coming out. I thank you for the women coming out. Somebody daddy locked up. Somebody brother locked up. Somebody uncle locked up. Oh, but they coming out. There's a niece locked up. There's a mother locked up. Oh, but you're coming out. A auntie's locked up. A daughter's locked up. But you're coming out. Hallelujah. We pray. Glory, we pray that you do it. Do exceedingly abundantly above. We can ask or even think. We thank you for doing it. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We won't give up and we won't quit. We won't take down, we won't back down, but we lift up 
We lift up in prayer. We rise up and pray. We set our clocks to get up and pray. No more sleeping in. No more sleeping in. No more being lazy. No more being complacent. Get up. Get up. God say, get up. It's time to pray. No more taking breaks. We've been taking a break too long. We've been sitting down too long. It's time to get up. It's time to get up. We stand in the authority of the Holy Ghost. We get up and pray. Set your clock, get up and pray. You want God to do it? You got to get up and pray. You got to turn off the TV, go to bed early so you can get up early in the morning when I seek thee, O oh Lord. We are gonna seek you early. We are not gonna seek you late when we're tired and half sleep. But God, we seek you first. We acknowledge you in all of our ways so that you can direct our path. God, what do I do today? What do I do today? Who do I encourage today? Who do I minister to? Oh, God, help us, God, to be about your business. Help us, God. Help us, help us. Help us, God. Help us in those areas that you want us to come higher and deeper in you, God. You got to call it upon our lives, but we got to pray. We got to pray so that we can know you. We don't know you like we need to know you, but oh, God, you'll bring a test that we will get to know you. You don't need no test to get to know Get to know him now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We come against being stagnated. We come against being lazy. We're not lazy, God. We'll serve you, God. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for not doing what you told us to do. Forgive us, God, and help us. Help us, God. Help us. And we give you praise. We give you praise. And we give you honor. We give you praise and we give you honor. And we come against backlash, retaliation. Every word that we said shall spring forth on good ground. We thank you, God, that the word, it will prick what needs to be pricked, that it'll make somebody say, yep, that's me. Yep, I'm going to do it. God, it was me. She was talking about me. Help me, God. Thank you for the reminder. We thank God for the reminder. See, sometimes we be sleep. You can be walk, but you can be sleepwalking. Wake up. It's time to get up. Get up. It's time to get up. We thank you. We will put God first and not last. No more making him last. He not the end of the day. He the beginning in the morning. God, early. Here I am. When he say, get up, you ain't going to the bathroom. You ain't hungry. He's saying, wake up. The enemy is out lurking, but you getting up, not praying. Uh-uh. Wake up. You don't need no alarm clock. I'm going to tell you this. When you went timed in with God, when you tuned in with God, he'll wake you up. God wakes me up. I just wake up. I'm woke. I'm woke. That means pray. When I was going through that with Demetri, hallelujah, I had a schedule. But in that trial, he let me rest, but he woke me up. I was in that closet at two something. In that closet, I just woke up. He said, pray. I got up. See, the enemy, he's lurking in the wee hours, but we sleep. Some of us, I am the 4 o'clock a.m. Get up. Get up and pray. Whatever time it is, but whatever time it is, acknowledge him first. So, God, we thank you for the reminder. We thank you for the reminder. We thank you for the reset. We thank you for a restart. We thank you gave us another chance to get it together. This is a new day. Because you're breathing, because you're here, it's a reset. You can do it again. We start over. And when we start this time, we're going to finish strong. And we give you praise, God, for doing it in the name of Jesus. And it is so, and so it is. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're thank just you. grateful to God for tonight. Amen. We just thank you so much. This has just been so rich. This has been so rich. I know when Pastor Buckner gets off the highway tonight, he's going to enjoy watching this on tonight. Amen. 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 I know whatever time he gets in, he's going to want to watch it. God thank bless. You. Tell him thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Levon, Jesus. Evangelist Lavon Morris. Thank God you. used you in a mighty way. I know somebody was blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. And we look forward to the next time because there will be a next time uh, in the very near future, by the way. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. We pray that this has blessed you in a mighty way. Thank you for tuning in to Elmo Memorial. I look forward to um, being with you all for five minutes with First Lady on Friday at 6 o'clock p.m., as well as Sunday school on Sunday at 9 o'clock and for our 1030 service. God bless you all. Continue to be safe. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.